Okay, so share, oops, share screen on there. Hey, if you want to, you guys can message me later or just in direct message there if you want. I can see if you got it or not. You can send me what, who you think is what. If not, I can tell you tomorrow. It's not a big deal. Okay, but it's a, it's a good one for a straight logic. And sometimes, like I said, you have to take a chance. Like you might have to go, okay, I think this is the greenhouse and then work around that. Or I think this person did this, right? Sometimes you'll have to do that. Okay, let's do some housekeeping. Uh, housekeeping here, there we go. Oops, that's not what I want. I want this. Hey, okay, well, you can see what we're doing today. Uh, we're doing probability today. And then we're gonna try this one. <laughs> this, hopefully this works. I think it should because these are all links to really workable websites. And what it is, it's called a bell ringer. And you, sometimes you do this in science. And what it is, is you do an activity, you have a certain amount of time, the bell rings, you move to the next activity. And you're just going to keep doing that. We're going to do it for probability. But let's talk about a couple things. So tomorrow is your, let me go back up the top here. Tomorrow is your, oops, let's try this again here. Learning activity, right? So this was the thing we've been talking about since the beginning of the course. And what it is. 5% of your mark, pretty easy 5% if you do the work. If you don't do the work, it's, it's a difficult 5%. So what this is, is this could be any activity you want, um, math and whatever subject area works with you, it can be anything. Uh, we won't do the short three to five minute presentation because we're limited in time for the number of people we have. So what I'll do is if you get that to me ahead of time, so I would like it before it's class tomorrow, Right, so is that clear? It's before class tomorrow. So then what I can do is I can post it on the website and then we can all have access. Um, I'm going to use one of you as an example because I already got one. Okay. Uh, so let me look back here and I'm gonna show you right, which I, I think it was, who sent me? Kaylee, it was you, I think you sent me one, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Okay, so what I did is I'm gonna, down the bottom of this is where I'm going to put the student learning activities. So it says, I know it says placeholder. What it is, is there's each of these is going to have an activity, right? So she sent me the instructions. So if you click on that, you can see what the instructions look like, right? And then she sent me what the game board looks like with um, the, um, like a sample one too. So if you get that to me ahead of time tomorrow before class, Right. Then what I'll do is I can download it properly, put it into here, and they'll all be here eventually anyways, but it'll just make it easier. Right. So when uh, so basically what we'll do tomorrow, Kaylee, I'm using you as an example. I'll click on this and then Kaylee will just give us a quick, quick rundown, 30 seconds, whatever it is, just so we have an idea of the how the game works or not. And these are here for you guys to use, hopefully, in your classrooms. There, there's going to be a big list of them when we're done. Right. And I think somebody just sent me one too. I think it was fair. No, was it fair? Fair, did you send me one? Can't remember. Somebody just sent me one. Yeah, fair sent me one. So I'll post that one, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I'll have to figure out how to change it over from the email to a PDF, but I'll, I'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> yeah, yours. Yeah, that was perfectly perfect what you sent me. So that was excellent. Okay. So that is tomorrow. That's what we're going to do. So the whole, the whole thing is activity presentations, right? And basically, we're just going to go through them. And you might find something that you really like, and you might find something that you don't like. And that's up to you to decide. I have a question. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. I have to leave the room for one minute. Did you say we have to present tomorrow? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to send it to me ahead of time. I'm going to put it on here. And then I'm going to say, OK, Alice. What game did you pick? And you're going to tell me, hey, I picked this tic-tac-toe game that is about math and this. Perfect. I said, is it difficult to play? And you'll say, no, it's super easy, right? Like you'll just, just a brief rundown, probably about 30 seconds. That's it. Is that clear? You guys talk to me all the time anyways. This is nothing new. Yeah, thanks. I'm just going to, it's basically, and, I, and if you're, I'll just ask you questions about it if that helps. Hey. Will this work? Have you played it before? And you could say, no, I've never played it before. And some of you might say, yeah, we play it all the time. 
Like, give me some good feedback with it. Because if you give good feedback, then other people might be interested and they might be able to use it, right? That's the whole purpose behind it. Uh, what do we got here? No, uh, Sam, the water is what you have to figure out. It, does, it doesn't mention that because you got to figure out who did it. Waldner says, Eric says he solved it. And Justin, no, the website is never going away. Well, unless I die. Hopefully that doesn't happen anytime soon. Okay. Again, all this stuff will be up here. And again, what will also be up here, if you need extra practice, right, there's that math refresher there. Heck, if you, if you end up teaching high school, you can even look at all my high school stuff if you want to. Oops. How many grades do you teach per day? Uh, four courses. It's standard. There's a, it's a five day school day and we get one for prep. So I teach, I normally teach four courses. So the only ones that aren't up here is I didn't have grade 12 essentials, which I'll hopefully have next year. And then it'll be up here also. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. So only two things left. There is the learning activities and well, you can see what we're doing tomorrow. Tomorrow is the learning, uh, sorry, the activities. Where are we here? And then Hey, there's the final exam review and I put it on here. So you can click on it if you want, just a bunch of questions. And the answers are at the end, I think. Yeah, all the answers are at the end. I have a question. Yeah. You have nothing about point slope and rise over run. So does this mean there's nothing on the exam? No, no, it could be there. It's just, right, I, I, if I, <laughs> I had to make a review, I couldn't make it too big or you wouldn't get through. Or, so what's this, fractions? Uh, Everything we've covered, right? Every, basically, think about it. Every, all the assignments is a good ones too. In fact, I don't know if you guys noticed on the last assignment, some of those questions were the ones that were on the test too. I know. I'm kind of lazy that way. <clears throat> I'm kind of lazy that way. So if you have your assignments, you might want to look at them. Uh, was there no slope? I can't remember. Just lots of different things here. It's just, it's just to get you thinking about stuff. Okay, and please note the test. The final exam is on Thursday. It's from five to eight o'clock. You get three hours for it. It is 100 questions, right? So most of you have had no problem with the 50 questions. So this is 100 multiple choice questions. So a couple of things, make sure you have your formula sheet with you. Make sure you have scrap paper, make sure you have some drinks and some Fruit and or potato chips, whatever you guys like to eat for your snacks. Again, it's the same process. You guys have already done three tests in the midterm. This is nothing new for you. It's actually been working out pretty good, I think. So, Oh, somebody. Uh, can I uh, um, Who was that again? iPhone was Lori, right? Yeah, Lori. Yeah, yeah, Lori, that works. Sorry, I don't remember that was you. Okay, so let's talk about this. This is probability. Probably, it's actually quite a short little, oh man, it's like a short little run through. And then I wanna spend the bulk of it, like when, once we do our questions and take our break, I wanna spend the bulk of it, probably half an hour to 45 minutes on a bell ringer activity based on probability. And you can see what it is. We're gonna talk about coins, dice, cards, spinners, and Monty Hall. The Monty Hall game is actually from Monty Hall's originally from Winnipeg. So let's talk about, let's get the PowerPoint up here. Uh, oops, from beginning. So we're gonna talk about experimental and theoretical probability, right? Uh, and the principles of counting. If you notice 11.3, sorry, 11. 14.3 is not part of it. I took it out of there because it really wasn't relevant to what we needed. So you see it goes 14, 1, 14, 2, 14, 4. Okay. Okay, so let's go through this here. Okay, experimental probability. Here's the big difference with probability. And I'll, I'll just give you a brief a rundown before we actually kick into experimental and theoretical. Probability can be in many forms. It can be in fractions, it can be in decimals, it can be percents, it can be ratios, it doesn't matter. The big difference between experimental and theoretical is theoretical, you don't actually do the experiment for figure out the probability, 
right? Whereas experimental probability, you actually do the experiment. So for instance, give me one second. I have a six sided die. If I figure out the probability on that die without actually rolling it, that's theoretical. If I keep rolling it over and over again and over and over and over again, that's experimental. That's kind of the main point behind theoretical and experimental. They're very similar except for that thing. Okay, so let's talk about experimental. So what we have is experimental. This is the fancy way it's written, right? Our probability of whatever we want is how many times it occurs, which is R, over the total amount of times you do something. A simple example is, hey, if I went, went down to the gym and I gave you a basketball, how many free throws do you think you could make if you did it 10 times? Well, 10 would be the bottom because that's the amount that you do it. And then you could figure out how many times you hit it into the basket. That would be your R times. Okay. And you can repeat it over and over and over and over again. Okay. So one of the cool things is, is if you take experimental probability and uh, perform it repeatedly, like I'm talking uh, tens, hundreds, thousands, 10,000, 100,000 times, what happens is it gets closer and closer and closer and closer to theoretical. So for instance, if you toss a coin, I'm asking you theoretical now, what's the probability that you'll get a heads? Theoretically. 50%. 50% or one over two, correct? Two sides to the coin. There's only a heads on one side. Okay. So this next chart is really kind of cool. And this was based on an experiment. You can actually do this. So what it is here is number of trials. And this is just a coin tossing, right? And you can see 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, 10,000 times. And as you get closer to like a bigger number, you can see that this number gets really close to 50%. It gets really, really super close to theoretical, even though it's an experiment. And this applies to anything. If I rolled a die, right? And there's a one in, six prob or one in six chance that I get whatever number I want. If I did that over and over and over and over again, I would get close to theoretical probability. That makes sense? Hopefully. It's kind of a neat concept that I think a lot of people don't think about when they think about probability. I don't know yet what theoretic probability is. Theoretical probability is, is it's, it's exactly like, oops, it's exact, it looks exactly like this, number of trials, but the only difference is this top part, you don't actually do an experiment, it's just based on pure math, right? Like a coin, right? Two sides to the coin, which is N, and how many heads are there? There's one. We'll get to it. We're going to do theoretical coming up. This is just, I just kind of want to explain experimental first. Okay. Um, here, the final exam scores of students in a pre-calculus class are shown. Compute the experimental probability that a student chosen at random from the class had a score in the 70s. Okay. So what you got to look at is you got to look at how many do we have in total? Well, it's four by, what is that? Four by seven. So we have 28 scores in total, correct? How many of those are in the 70s? So look at the sheet, look at the chart and count how many are in the 70s. Six. Six, so there's one on the top, one on the second, one on the third and four, three on the fourth line. Yeah, so, we, so our probability, our experimental probability will be six out of 24, right? And if you want to change that to a decimal, we did that unit already, right? Multiply the numerator by the, sorry, divide the numerator by the denominator and you get 0 0.21. Or if you want to switch that to a percent, 21%. That is experimental probability. You actually physically do the probability. Yeah, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, going back to the coin toss, uh, I believe I read somewhere that it's actually more likely that tails gets uh, landed because the head side is a bit heavier. It is like they talk about if you really get down to it is is the slight variance in the coin, right? But I mean, if you do this overall, it will st no matter how you do it, it should get close to 50 percent, right? If you did this a million times and you can actually find um, uh, there's different websites out there that'll that'll 
you can roll, say like roll a five and do it a hundred thousand times and it'll calculate it for you, right? This one, you can actually flip a coin, do it a million times, it'll calculate it for you. It's kind of cool. Uh, okay, next one. So Christina has five pennies. She is curious how often she could expect to see at most one head when all five coins are flipped. So at most one head. Okay, so what it is, is you can create a table like this. So number of heads, zero, right? She got that one time. One head, she got that seven times. Two heads, 13 times. Three heads, 16, four, 11, and five and two, right? So the number of heads is on the top here and the frequency is how often it came up. So she did this experiment, you can see 50 times, okay? So that is gonna be our denominator because that's the total amount of trials was 50 times, okay? Now you gotta be careful with this one because it says, uh, where is it here? Expect to see at most one head, at most one head. So you have to figure out what number goes over that 50. What number do you think it is? <laughs> at most one head. So how many times? Well, how many times would it be if we, how many times did we see a five heads? Two times. How many times did we see four heads? 11 times. So how many times would it be at most one head? Seven. Okay. So Alice says seven. Well, seven here is, is yes, one head you see seven times. But it's in the wording of the question. It says at most. So could you also have zero heads? That, that applies in this case. So one and seven, ah, we get our, on the based on this one, right? The data shows that, so at seven, uh, one head appeared on seven of the trials and no heads appeared once. So that means the outcome is one plus seven is eight, right? So eight out of 50, or if you divide it, point, 0 0.16 or 16%, right? So you gotta be careful of the question, right? If it, if it had said, at, at, uh, how many times did one head appear? Yeah, you would do seven out of 50. Again, this is based on actually doing the experiment. And what's gonna happen is when we get to theoretical, we don't worry about the experiment at all. We just do it theoretically. Okay, you need a little bit of terminology for probability just at the end here. So we have outcome. The outcome is the result of one trial. The sample space is all the outcomes of an experiment. So for instance, if we go back here, that is the sample space, this thing right here, because this is all the possibilities that happen, right? So that's our sample space. And then the event, some of the outcomes of the experiments, a subset of the sample space. So here's the deal. You got all your samples, right? Here's all your samples, bang, bang, bang. There's all your samples. We want one specific outcome or two specific outcomes, right? That's what we're gonna pull out of those ones. That's the E part of it, right? Right there. So it's E is a subset of all the sample space. Okay. Okay. That is, oops, that is, there we go. Got the right thing. Here. Sorry, I'm just getting my pages in line here. Okay, here we go. So now there's two that we got to worry about mutually exclusive and independent. And they often, they often get mixed up when you're dealing with stuff. So what it is, Mutually exclusive events is you cannot have two events happen at the same time. So, and the best way to remember this is a coin. If I flip a coin, it's either heads or tails, but not both, right? It can't be both heads and tails, right? So they're subsets of each other, right? So what it is, is they're mutually exclusive. They can't happen together, okay? So what we do is when we're talking about that, if you remember back the old Venn diagram stuff, right? It's the probability of A or B. So for instance, if we're dealing with, when we get to probability, the probability of heads or tails, you would find the probability of getting heads, you'd find the probability of getting tails and then add them together. 
Okay. So mutually exclusive. Basically, it's one experiment. I just always use the example coin can't be both heads and tails, it has to be either. Okay. Now that is different from independent events. Independent events is one, the occurrence of one does not affect the occurrence of the other. Okay. So for instance, that would be like drawing an ace out of a deck of cards and flipping a heads on a coin. They are completely separate. One ha doesn't have anything to do with the other. Okay. Does that, make, does that make sense? I just want to make sure this is clear. For mutually exclusive, can't happen at the same time. Independence, right? It's one or it's, they don't affect each other at all. Okay. Now the difference between that is this one for mutually exclusive, you add, when you get to independent events, you multiply. So, right, uh, this could be the probability of uh, getting an ace out of a deck and getting a heads on a coin. You would take the probability of both of those and multiply them together. I have a question. Yeah. I understand independent events, but what does this mutually inclusive mean or exclusive? Okay. Mutually exclusive is one thing. For instance, right here, tossing a coin can result in either a heads or tails, but not both. So it's like one experiment and you either have two choices, right? When it's independent, they're completely separate experiments. One doesn't have any effect on the other. So it's like pulling an ace out of a deck and a coin. It's almost like having two experiments and then you multiply them. This one, they're separate, so you have to add them. Add what? Sorry? What are you adding? Sorry. So for instance, the probability of a heads or a tails, you would find the probability of the heads find the probability of the tails and then add them because you can't have them at the same time. Okay. Whereas independent, you can have them at the same time. Okay, now that's the... Okay. And it's a subtle difference between the two of them. Okay, so let's talk about the counting principle and you'll see, uh, you'll see some of this will come up in the principle of counting. Okay, so... <clears throat> To determine theoretical probabilities, which is the next piece, right? We have to find uh, the number of outcomes in the event and the number of the outcomes in the sample space, okay? So when we're calculating theoretical probability, it's just a matter of counting, that's all it is. And I'll explain that once we get in two slides when we get to the example, it'll make quite a bit more sense. So, oops, it's probability of counting. So multiplication principle. Okay, here's the deal. Stage one, here's the outcomes. Stage two, here's the outcomes. They have no effect on each other, right? So we can figure out they're independent of each other. They have you, nothing to do with each other. Do this and do this. So to find it, it's quite easy, the probability. It's A and B, you have to remember to multiply. And if you remember the word and always means multiply, right? A and B, multiply. Okay, so here we go with an example and hopefully this makes way more sense in an example. Okay, so we have a deck of cards. We got a deck of cards. There we go here. Standard deck of cards, right? So what we wanna know is how many ways can two aces be pulled out of a deck of cards? Okay, with replacement. So, how many aces are in a deck of cards right now? Four. There's four, right? So if we pull, if we pull three cards out of the deck, right? There's, right, possibility of four aces for the first ace. Is that correct? Okay. Now what we do is it says with replacement. So what we do is we take those cards and put them back into the deck. Now, how many? How many aces are still in the deck that we can pull from? Four. Four, okay. So what happens if we replace the card, then each choice is independent. So what we do is the probability of the first ace is four, right? And the probability of the second ace is four, so 16, right? So it's the counting principle when it comes to aces. Now, 
All we do differently for theoretical is we add a denominator to it, okay? So for instance, there's four aces in a deck, but how many cards are in a deck? 52. 52. So once we get to theoretical probability, all we're going to get is four over 52, right? So the counting principle gets us to the theoretical probability. That's all it does. Okay. Here's another question for you. Let's flip. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 16. How many ways can aces be pulled, two aces be drawn in a succession from a deck of ordinary cards without replacement? So here's the deal. How many aces for the first time? Four. 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 But what happens is that one ace, let's say it's the ace of clubs, it does not get put back into the deck. Now, how many aces can you pull from the deck a sec the second time? Three. Three. Okay. So then it's slightly different, right? So without replacement, if we don't replace the first ace, then the number of the ways to draw the second ace is impacted, right? It has an effect on it. So the first ace is four. The second ace, it's already gone out, right? The first ace was done. So it's three. So again, that's counting principle. And then all we do is we put a denominator on it to go to theoretical, okay? And the next piece is theoretical probability. Now, I really miss teaching this in person because I love card tricks and I have a ton of card tricks. And normally when I was teach this unit, I would do card trick after card trick as showing you theoretical probability. It just doesn't work very well doing it this way. Sorry about that. Very sad. Okay. Theoretical probabilities. Here we go. Equal outcomes over total number of outcomes, right? So for instance, um, I'll give you a simple example. The ace of clubs, right? How many ace of clubs are in the deck? There's only one in a standard deck. In a sta I'm always talking a standard deck. That's all. I don't use trick decks. I use standard decks. Okay. So a standard deck is one ace. How many cards in total again? 52, is it? 52. So to figure out the probability, the probability of pulling the ace of clubs out of a deck is one over 52. Okay. What's the probability of just pulling an ace out of a deck? Well, how many aces are there? Four, 52. Four out of 52, right? Um, what's the probability of pulling a black card? A, just any black card out of a deck? Is it 13 out of 52? Say, hang on, say, say that again. Is it oh, it's half of 52? It's half of it. So 26, right? Because there's 13 spades, there's 13 clubs. So 26 out of 52 or a half, right? Correct, right? This is all theoretical probability because I don't technically need to do that deck of cards at all you should know, hey, what's the probability of this? For, for instance, well, a die, a six-sided die. That's your total number of outcomes. What's the probability of rolling a three? One half. No, no. How many threes are there? One out of six. One out of six, right? So it's one out of six total number, right? Uh, coins, like we said with coins, right? Heads or tails, there's two outcomes, right? Probability of a heads is one out of two, right? This is all theoretical because I don't actually have to flip the coin, roll the dice, or pull any cards out of the deck, okay? So let's take a look at this example here. This is kind of a cool one. So what we got here is determine the probability of obtaining a total score of three or four on a single throw of two dice, right? So I take two dice, Right? I don't actually have to do this because we're going to do it theoretical. And what I do is I add those up. So what we do is we can create a sample space. And this is a sample space of two die. So you can see this is the possibility for the rolls, right? Right? One, 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 two, one, three, one, four, and so forth. Uh, down this side is one, uh, one, one, two, one, three, one. That's a possibility. So what we need to know is how many possible, this is our sample space here. How many possibilities in total? 36. 36, right? Six times six is 36. So our denominator is going to be 36. Now, what we want to know is a sum of three or four. Okay. So look on the chart here and add them up and see where you find one of three or four.
five? There is five, correct. So this, this two, one, this one, two, those both equal three. Three, one, two, two, and one, three. Those equal four, right? So our total then is, yep, yeah, five out of 36. Theoretical, we didn't actually have to roll the dice at all, right? That's purely based on theoretical. Now, here's the question though. If you did this as an experiment, will your experiment always be the same as your theoretical? No. No, it, 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 it could be. You could get it dead on the money for that, right? But it normally isn't. Now, and again, that comes back to that law of rolling, of doing numbers. If you did that a 10,000 times or 100,000 times or a million times, you would get closer, close as poss you possibly can to that theoretical probability when you do experimental and experiment. Okay. Uh, a couple of key things, properties of probabilities. Let's just talk about those. The probability of A happening equals zero it, oh, if A cannot occur. So let me, here, let me give you an example. I have, a, I have a die here, a six sided die. What is the probability of rolling a seven? One in six? Uh, no, sorry. It's, it's zero, right? Because there's no, there's no seven on this die at all, right? So the probability of rolling a seven cannot exist. So the probability is equal to zero if it can occur, right? It's kind of like a trick question. What is the probability now? Let's do the die again. What is the probability of rolling a one, two, three, four, five, or six? One out of six. No, no. Listen to what I said again. Six out of six. Six out of six, right? So one, correct? Or 100%, right? So here in this case, oops. The probability equals one if and only if A always occurs, right? So that would be like, hey, I rolled a one, two, three, four, five, or six. But normally, any probability is always between zero and one, right? So for instance, a coin toss, the probability of getting a heads or a tails is a half. Yep, that falls between one, zero and one. Uh, the probability of rolling a three on a die is one out of six. Yep, that falls between zero and one. The probability of pulling the ace of clubs out of the deck is one over 52. Yep, that's between zero and one. Does that, does that make sense for that rule? It has to be between those two. Okay, oh, sorry, go ahead. The C stands for probability and A stands for outcome, no. It, whatever whatever you're asking for the pro so for instance you would write the probability of um a one right you would put probability of one if you had a six-sided die or you'd put the probability of an h which would be the probability of te of a heads or you'd put the probability of ace of clubs right so here let me, let me give you an example let me just throw one up on the smart uh, the smart board here just so you can see how you write it it's very common written this way So if I asked you what the probability of rolling a heads was, it's kind of like this, and you could either do it that, or you sometimes you'll just see it as abbreviations, right? Would be one over two, right? One over two. Or the probability of, um, what do we say? Ace of clubs, right? Would be your one over 52, stuff like that. Just how you write it. You can write it any way you want. Okay, you can okay. you can actually even write this is kind of cool. You can actually even write it this way. Watch this one. The probability of tails with a line through it. So what does that mean? I don't know. It's not exactly getting... the same as the one above it. So the probability of not getting a tails would be the probability of getting a heads. Right? Okay. It's kind of a neat way of doing it. It's just a different way to think about stuff, right? When it's dealing with probability. Okay, now, oh, let me put the screen back up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I need this one here and from current slide. Oops. Okay, so this one here, 
this one here is one of my pet peeves. Odds. Because everybody uses odds incorrectly. Especially if they've watched movies, they will use it incorrectly because they use this in the movie all the time. What are the odds in the horse race? What are the odds of winning? What are the odds of losing? Okay. So what we have is we have odds in favor and odds against. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you, a, I'm going to put another example back up on the smart board that will explain this really, really well. Because like I said, people always screw this up. So odds in favor are one way. And then all you do for odds or against is flip it around the other way. That's all we have to do in this case. What are, what are you asking me here, Alice? On slide 1422, there's the probability of sum of three or four. What does the N mean? Just a number, just means number. Oh, the number of times. Now, you, basically, you're going to always see it as probability, of, like, like I showed you there with the P before, uh, on the board there. Okay, let me, let me, I'm going to give you a really quick lesson on odds and probability that hopefully will fix uh, a ton of questions. Not, well, hopefully we'll, I'll fix your movie going education. <laughs> okay, there we go. Let's see if we can do this. Let me turn my let me turn my speaker around so if anybody says anything I can hear you. Okay. Probability of a heads. Okay, what's the probability of a heads? One out of two. One over two. Okay. So two is the total number of outcomes, right? So this is right here. If we talk about this, this is the total number of outcomes, total number of outcomes. And what this is on the top here is this is our favorable one, what we really want, right? We want the heads, so it's our favorable outcome. Okay, now here's how odds work. So the odds of a heads is favorable dot dot unfavorable, colon, I guess I could, instead of dot dot, I could have said colon. Okay, so here we go. How many favorable outcomes do we have for heads? One. Careful. How many unfavorable outcomes? One. Okay. One again. One. That is odds. This is why people get this mistaken all the time. So the odds of getting a heads is one to one. Okay. Now, here's the cool thing. If you take your odds right here and you add those two numbers together, you always get the bottom of your probability. Always. Okay. Let, let's try another one. We'll, we'll just keep going with this. What is the probability? And we're talking about a six sided die here. What is the probability of rolling a three? Probability. One out of six. One out of six. Okay. Now, Let's do odds. So odds of a three. And again, this is favorable to unfavorable. So how many favorable outcomes are there? One. One. How many unfavorable outcomes are there? Five. Correct. Right? Because it would be the other stuff, like the one, the two, the four, five, and the six. You know if you did it correctly, because if you add those up, do you get the bottom of your probability? Yeah, you do. Okay, now here, let me show you something here. Let's, here. let me get rid of that last piece here. Here's an interesting flip. What are the odds of not getting a three? Five. Five, Five. two, one. Right, favorable would be not threes. Unfavorable would be threes, right? So what it is is odds for and against are just, you just flip them around, flip them around. And, the, and again, it still works, right? The bottom of those always equal your probability, no matter what. Okay, let me do one more. 
Uh, probability of ace of diamonds. One in 52. One out of 52, right? And again, you can change that to a decimal, change that to a percent, doesn't matter. Okay, odds. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> odds of ace of diamond. Go ahead. 51. No. Oh, sorry, what was the first number? Ace. First number was one. Oh, sorry. One to 51. Sorry. Yes, correct. Thank you. Sorry, I only heard the 51. Okay. Right, because if you take those two, right, they add up. Could you also say 51 to 1 against? Yeah, you could, because that's the backwards part of it, right? So the, if you're against it would be, yeah. So that's that would be like doing putting a line through it. That's against, right? So here we go. Now we're going to relate it to the movies, right? I don't know if you've ever watched a movie and somebody goes to the horse track and they bet on the long shot, right? And they say, hey, the odds of this person winning Odds of winning, whatever it happens to be at the track. Uh, odds of, wait, ING, sorry. Whoa, 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 wait. I just screwed that up. Oh, whatever it is. Okay. The odds of winning are 100 to 1, right? The odds of winning. What's the probability that they're going to win? One. One over. 99? No. 100? 101. 100. Add them up. Remember? Add them up. Right? So they'll often say, you'll see sometimes they'll say odds of 99 to 1, right? Which is just 1 over 100. Super common that way, right? Now, that also applies when they say something like 2 to 5 odds. I don't know if you've ever heard that, right? 2 to 5 odds. So the probability of that one happening is 2 over seven, right? Because remember, if you add those up, you get the bottom of your probability. It's interesting when you, I don't know if you've, I used to go with my grandpa to the track in Winnipeg all the time when I was a little kid. He loved, he would bet like $2 on every race. That's what it was, but he just liked going to do that, right? It's one of the most common uh, problems, right? People enter in mix odds and probability up all the time. Hopefully that clarifies it a bit. Uh, okay, so here, let's do, oh, somebody's, oh, we got a bunch of stuff in chat. Hang on, hang on. Be because it's 100 to one, right, Sam? So you add both of them up to figure out your probability. So it's one out of 101 chances, right? Yeah, oh, so, oh Eric put it right there. All right, okay, so uh, 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 where are we here? Need this. Sorry, I always have to go back from current slide. So odds in favor and odds and against. Okay, so let's look at an example here. Game of craps, right? Craps is a common game if you ever have been to Vegas. Um, and what it is, one wins on the first in the game of craps, one wins on on the first roll of a pair of dice if a seven or eleven is thrown, right? So it has to have a seven or eleven on the first roll. Okay, so. Let W be the set of outcomes that result in a seven or 11, right? So here's all the possible outcomes. This is our sample space, right? One and six, two and five, three and four, four and three, five and two, six and one, five and six, six and five. Those are all the possibilities if you chuck two dice that either is going to form a seven or 11, okay? How many outcomes is this? Eight, right? Okay. Now, how many ways, if I throw two dice, theoretically, how many outcomes are there in total? Two dice. 36. 36. If you remember back, if you remember back, where did we do that one? Where's my sample space? Oh, I went by it. Sorry. <laughs> That's what happens when I flip by this too quickly. There, right? There's all our possibilities, 36 in total. Okay, so 
what are the odds of winning on the first roll? So here's the breakdown of it. If here, here's the question. If it was probability, it would be eight over 36, correct? Because it's probability is always the desired outcomes or the favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. But they're asking for odds. So how many favorable outcomes are there? There is eight of them, correct? How many unfavorable outcomes are there? 28. 28. So our odds of eight to eight to 20, eight to 28, or if you reduce down two to seven, right? That is the actual physical, that's the calculation if you're shooting craps. That is the odds that you will win. Two out of nine, or, right, or eight over 28. Okay. Why does a W sometimes have a line on top and sometimes not? Because W in this case are favor, are favorable, and okay. A with a bar of it are unfavorable. I was wondering. So it's to say, you can use it with any letter. They just use it with winning or not winning, right? Okay, one last thing, expected value. Okay, here's the deal. Lotto 649, some people buy it, I buy it occasionally. Some people play VLTs. Some people go to Vegas. Can you make money? Potentially. Potentially. Okay, there it is. <laughs> so what there is out there is there's something called expected value. Right? Expected value is what can you expect will happen if you play a game. And when I say play a game, I'm talking about more than once, right? So for instance, if you're playing the VLTs, you're rolling, picking the numbers or, roll, or slot machines, you're pulling the, the arm, right? If you're playing a lot of 649, right? It's how many times you play it. And what it is, is there's three possibilities for expected value. In the long run, if it's positive, that means you win. If it's negative, it means you lose. And if it's zero, it means you break even. Okay. Now, does somebody want to take a guess? Las Vegas. Positive, negative, or zero? Negative. Every single game in Vegas, every single game has a negative expected value. That doesn't mean you won't win, but the only people that win is Las Vegas, right? Because that's where they make their money. Because their expected values are always negative, so then you always lose money and they always gain money. Okay, this is a simple formula. And I think this formula is on the formula sheet. Okay, so there is three, uh, sorry, three. Oh, I wish I could count some days. There is four things. Probability of winning, probability of losing. Those two probabilities always added together equal one. So for instance, the probability of getting a heads is a half. The probability of getting a tails is a half. Added together gives you your one. Probability of winning on a six-sided die is one out of six. The probability of losing is five out of six. Added together gives you six out of six or one or 100% every time. Okay? Then you have to deal with what's called the gain, which is the winnings minus the initial bet. And this, what, what, what happens is if you pay a dollar to play the game and you win $5, your gain is only actually $4, right? Because it's the winnings minus the initial bet. Right. So if you pay a buck and win five, your gain is four dollars. OK. And your loss is whatever your initial your loss is, whatever you paid for at the beginning. If I pay a buck, I pay a buck and that's my loss. Let's do an example. It's easier if you actually see an example. OK. Oops. So you're going to play a game from a deck of cards. Right. You got your deck of cards. You pay your two dollars. And if you pull an ace from the deck of cards, doesn't matter which ace, right? Because there's, right, there's four of them. If you pull any ace from a deck of cards, it'll work. You'll win. Okay. So what's the probability of an ace? What's the probability of winning? Say it. Alice, you got your mic off. Say it. Or you got your mic on. Say it. No, I'm afraid that the... Well, how many aces are there? Four. Out of how many in total? Four. 
fifty two. Okay, so that is your probability of winning. So right here, you can see where it says four out of fifty two is your probability of winning. Now here's the deal: if your probability of winning is four out of fifty two, what's your probability of losing? Well, how many are left here? Forty eight out of fifty two. And if you look, four over fifty two plus forty eight over fifty two gives you fifty two over fifty two, which is one. Right? That that works every time. Okay. Now, which is what? Why one? Sorry, what? What do you mean with one? You won. You 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 played the game and you won the money. Like oh, you didn't lose. Okay. Like W O N, not O N E. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Now, how much? If you play the game and it's two dollars to play the game, you win ten. So, how much did you actually gain? Right here. How much do you actually gain? Gain what? Eight bucks. Eight. Eight bucks, right? Because based on this, right, gain is the winnings minus the initial bet. So the winnings is $10. The initial bet was two. So you gain $8 if you win this game. How much do you actually lose if you lose this game? Right here. Two. $2. Okay. So that's all it is. So probability of winning and probability of losing have to add up together to give you one or 100%. Right. And this could be in the form of fractions. This could be in the form of decimals. This could be in the form of percents. It makes no difference. So then we do the math. So four divided by 52 times eight gives us our 0 0.6154. 48 divided by 52 times two gives us our 1.86. And then we subtract them. Here's the deal. I'm not really, I don't really care what the number is. What I care about is it's negative. So does that mean I'm going to win, lose, or break even? Lose. Lose. If you played this over and over and over and over again, you're on average going to lose about a buck 23 every time. Okay. So if you played this game a hundred times, how much would you lose? $123 and eight cents. Right. If you played this game a thousand times, how much would you lose? $1,230 and 80 cents. Now, does that mean you're going to lose that amount every time? No, no, it's all based on probability. This is just to kind of give you a guideline. Okay, so a couple things. Vegas, always negative. Now, some of the best raffles out there are those small town raffles, right? What they do is they will say, okay, we're, we're issuing a thousand tickets. Each ticket is $20 and you might win a tractor. I don't know what that was. Okay. Those ones actually have probably the best expected value. They'll probably, they'll still be negative, but they're quite a bit lower in value for expected value, right? The higher the expected value, just the more you lose overall. So Vegas, like I said, every game out there has a negative expected value. I think the best one is that really weird one called Baccarat. I think that's one that one of the best for, for not losing as much money as you can, right? If you've ever heard of that game. Okay, so expected value. Again, that formula is on the formula sheet. And I think I put, there's, I think there's one on the final exam. All you got to remember is probability of winning, probability of losing, the gain and the loss. And then you just do the math. The math is pretty simple. I mean, I, I, you should be able to do that math, no problem. Okay. So. I have a question. No, I'm not answering it. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh, you're, you're muted. Hang on, you're muted. I don't know where this $10 comes from. I must have missed it. The $10? It's in the question. Well, what's the two? Well, that's what it you cost to play the game. Oh. So, for instance, somebody's sitting down and they have a deck of cards in front of you. And what it is, they have it all shuffled up. You put $2, you put a toonie down in front of them. There's the two bucks. That's what it costs to play the game. If you pull an ace out of the deck, they give you a $10 bill, right? So you had already paid $2. So your gain in that case is only $8 because it costs $2 to play, right? So you win your $10, there's your eight, and there's your loss of $2 if you happen to lose. And it could be anything, right? If I said it, it costs a buck to play, but you win $100, your gain is 99, right? It could be any amount. So think about Lotto 649. Lotto 649, a basic ticket is $4, 
right? And you have a chance to win whatever the whatever the movable jackpot is, right? I don't even know what it is. Let's say it's a couple million dollars, right? So then you could figure out what your gain is every time. And Vegas, it depends on about Vegas. It depends on about your how much you're uh, betting, right? If you're betting twenty dollars or hundred dollars or thousand dollars, right? It can make quite a difference. Does that make a little more sense? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, what time is it? We have, oh, we got lots of time. And again, there's the questions that we're gonna work on. So again, you can either take a break first and then do the questions or do the questions or take a break or do all the questions. The, the, the whole take a break for the whole time does, is not an option, right? Remember that. <laughs> it's only those other three possibilities. Um, what time? Quarter two? Maybe ten two? Should we try ten two? That thumbs up? No thumbs? Thumbs? Thumbs down? Are there any unhappy faces? Oh, Justin has a party. <laughs> Just joking. Okay, so let's shoot for ten. Let's coming back at ten two because. All we have left is this bell ringer activity. And I, I really want to give it a shot. And I really want you guys to try it because it should work uh, virtually. It's a bunch of experiments is what you're going to do. And you're basically going to predict the results, then do the experiment and see if your results line up. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So tend to. Uh, Brian. Uh, who? Yes. Yeah, I sent you a direct message. Uh, about oh crap! Hang on, so hang on. I have my mess. I have my chat turned off here. Here we go. Uh, Eric, Eric, where are you? Oh, there. Oh yeah. Let me take a look at it. Where's my answer key? <laughs> now I gotta find my answer key. Uh, here it is. That's it. I think. Uh, you got the water one right. And uh, let me look at the. Yep, you got the, you got it right. You got perfect. Good job. Obviously, you must like puzzles. I like this kind of puzzle. It's it's kind of a neat one because it's again it's you you had at one point. You had to take a chance and put in something in its place and see if it worked, right? I do it in Excel, so it's yeah. quite easy to do uh, if uh, something didn't quite work out. Yeah, Excel, and that's easy to move around. Excel is one of the best ways to do that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sam had a question here. What was that? Sam, are you still here, Sam? I'm here. Yep. Yeah. So all you, it, you, you actually, all you do is whenever you're dealing with odds, whatever the numbers happen to be, always add them up. And that's always the denominator of your probability. So in that one to a hundred case, just add them up. Then you get one out of 101, right? That's what your probability is. All we were doing is distinguishing between probability and odds. That's all it is. So if you wanted a probability of one out of 100, let's say you wanted a probability of one out of 100, your odds would have to be one to 99, okay? Because there's one favorable outcome and 99 unfavorable outcomes. But in total, the one unfavorable, sorry, the one favorable and the 99 unfavorable give you your 100 or total number of outcomes. So then why is there 101? Because it's 100, because the, the, uh, the odds, right? Here, let me go back to see if I still have it here. Hang on. Uh, hang on. So right here, the odds of winning are 100 to 1, right? So the probability of winning is 1 over 101. Because if you take 100 and add it to one, you get your bottom total number of outcomes. Because there's 100 favorable, oh, sorry, in this case, unfavorable, and one favorable. 
But the total number is still 101 because you have to take all the total outcomes, whether they're favorable or not favorable. Whereas this one, if you wanted, let's say, odds of 99 to 1, then it would be 1 over 100 probability because 99 plus 1 is our 100. These are two separate questions. I was just showing different ideas. Here, 2 to 5 odds, right? We take the 2 and the 5 and we add them together. We get the 7, which is the bottom of our probability, and we get 2 over 7. You just add them together. That's it. Okay, I'll have to study up on it a little bit after class, I guess. Okay. Thanks, though. Oh, yeah, no problem. Uh, Janelle, yeah, Janelle, I see you there. Let me change that now. There you are. I should double check because I think, uh, make sure I didn't miss anybody. Yeah, if you do come late, it's always easy. Oh, yeah, see, I missed Holly. There's Holly there. See Holly now. And the other one was, I'm missing, who am I missing here? Kayla George. Are you here, Kayla George? Let's see. There's Kayla, Kayla George. No, I do not see her. Okay. Right. Hey, Brian. Yep. I have a question for uh, tomorrow's class. Yep. So I just happened to check my emails because we were, me and the kids were scheduled for our second needle. Right. And the lady said that she was only able to schedule me for 540. Oh, okay. Um, I how, know far away, we, how far yeah. away is it from you? Well, it's at the um, Friendship Center on Second and College, so. Right down the street from me. Yeah. Um, so I know that when we went for the first one, they told us to be there a few minutes early, just in case there was a lineup. Okay. And then they told us we had to wait, I think it was 15 minutes after we got our needle. Yeah, you got to wait 15 so I'm not too sure what time I'll be on tomorrow, but I will finish working up on my activity thing okay. and email it to you. So that, that works. So here's the deal. So if, if I have it sent, I'll put it on the website there so we can look at it. If yeah. you happen to, to get online, like at, right at five, before you go, that's okay. You can go right away if you want, or it, we could wait until you get back after the thing. Okay. You just let you, I'll figure that if you happen to get on right away at five o'clock, then I'll know you're there. If not, it'll be the later part. Okay. Yeah. Cause I'm just going to, um, tomorrow I'm just going to sign in on my phone. So then, because I mean, basically all we have to do is like explain the game to you. Oh, right? Yeah. You could actually, you can explain it while you're getting your shot if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, cause you probably hear me yell. <laughs> I hate okay. needles. <laughs> oh, it's not that bad. Come on. <laughs> I know. I I sent my oldest son to do the first one, and I was like, you could go before me. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's only a thing. Sorry, what was that? The needle is only a thing. Oh, yeah. It's, some, it, it's, some, it's, it's Sometimes it's not even about the pain, right? It's just about the phobia of needles. A lot of people do not like needles, period. So. I never got used to them.
when I do my dentistry work, I make sure I don't see the need. If you guys get your math activities done earlier during the day tomorrow, send, try to send them as early as you can because then it gives me time to get them all on the website just to make it easier for everybody else. If it happens to be later, it happens to be later. We might have to just talk about it, but it'd be easier if it was uh, if I could post it. So. so should we email it to you? Yeah, just email it to me and I'll put it on the website. Just like you send everything. Well, yeah. So if it's a Word document, you can just email it to me. If, it, if it's something you need to scan and just use that genius scan and send it to me, it works like a charm. I had a question about that assignment. Like, it's not supposed to be written like an essay, is it? No. Look, look at, go, go on to the way here, here, here. Take a look at this. Kaylee, we're using you as a, you're our guinea pig again. <laughs> I'm just joking. It'll cost you. So it's your activity is already great anyway, so there's no issues with that. So here, if you look at Kaylee's, right? So the first part is the instructions. So if you look at the instructions, I'll pop it up on the screen. Very simple, point form, whatever, just like that. Okay. Simple. Do do not overthink it. <laughs> oh, okay, I was like writing different types of adaptations. Oh, no, no. What, what are you, a teacher? Come on, smart enough. <laughs> so just basically, you really just want the instructions. Well, it, the key thing is here is the overview, the grade, the materials. People want to know, for instance, if I look at this at Kaylee's here, and okay, I need a tray of dice. Crap, I don't have a tray of dice, so I need to go make sure I have that, right? So the materials are really useful. The directions could be very simple or complex. And then modifications. How, how do you change it if need be? Right? Okay. I'd so, written you like a, a reflective essay, so maybe I should adjust it, that. <laughs> and, then, and then she also included the actual game board itself. And you can see there's the game board. Perfect. Okay. Next. Okay, great. Thank you. That You're makes welcome. it easier. There you go. Where are we here? Right. 21. All Brian? Yes, Justin? What's going on? <laughs> you have a question or what? Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was my little attempt at a joke there. What's going on? <laughs> I'm just bugging you. Uh, I know. Um, in like, I bought this like maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, it, it seems like it has everything. It has the gold directions and what's included. I guess here included would be your materials. Yeah. Uh, yeah you got it from that teachers pay teachers, right? Yeah. And then the only thing I see that's missing is a grade that you're talking about. Well, try to figure out based on like, like, is it multiplication? Is it addition? Like try to base it on on the level what you think it might be and then just use that as the grade you could put a, a range too right oh it might be grade two to six whatever it happens to be yeah so it's one it's one step uh one step equations which i think is you start learning in grade six or seven. Oh uh, crap hang on let me look i you can find it on so them by hand on by hand and i don't have the experience you do yeah well <laughs> hang on hang on uh what is that um 
Wednesday Math outcomes, Friday. Manitoba. Uh, let's go to the website. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll bet on grade maybe seven that they start learning about the variable. And oh, hey, let's try seven. We'll take a look at it right now. Here's seven. Uh, we got here strand solving problems. Where's algebra? Percents, relationship, addition, subtract, and integers, concrete and pictorially. Because I want to, yeah, like I want to give you a head start as well. I, I don't want to email you it right before class tomorrow. Yeah, and four, get, 450, 455 won't cut it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, then okay, I'm, so, and I'm super busy, eh? So like. Here, here it is right here. So demonstrate an understanding here. Explain the difference between an expression and an equation. Evaluate an expression and model one-step linear equations. I, yeah, that's what so I grade figured. seven, right there. There, there, there's the specific outcome if you want to seven PR six. If you really want to get fancy, no, I don't care. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I am at the school until probably four thirty. Like, I'm just kind of tired. My last week of uh, my last practicum, and yeah, it's just kind of glad. To, well, not glad, but like. To give my mind a, a break. I, I, it's the same with it. I mean, I'm, I'm doing the presentation, but it's the same with me. I've been doing, what if this? This is a six week. I go from eight in the morning to eight at night and I'm like, I'm getting tired too. Yeah, man. Like I, I, like I have a newfound respect for teachers in the pandemic right now. It's, <laughs> it's like, you guys should have been respected before, but now, like in COVID time, like the, what they're what Frontier's making uh, the teachers do in their division, it's crazy. It here's the deal: you you, it's one of those things. People become teachers because they want to be teachers, right? They don't do it for yeah. the the fame and the glory. We're not one of the highly rated people in this world, which is it's yeah. sad in some ways, but we do it because we want to do it, right? So that's yeah. the reason you're doing it, right? Yeah. And like, yeah, it's uh, like, uh, it's, it's tough. It's tough. It's a tough boat to be in right now, especially doing this and do it in, uh, doing it remotely where you cannot see that light bulb turn on. You know what I mean? I think that's probably one of the reasons why I became a teacher was like seeing the, your product of like your students getting what you're teaching. Right? Yeah. You get the aha moments. Yeah. You just, yeah, you don't get it with remote learning. And I don't know what the plan is like for September here in Grand it, Rapids. And it's like, I think it's going to be remote again, probably. Yeah, that's pretty sad. There was one, there was one school division up north. I don't know which on which reserve. They're just re redoing the whole year. Yeah, I heard. Uh, yeah, I, I've been hearing that. I, I've been asking that actually, like, what is... Uh, Grand Rapids's plan are they are they gonna do it a repeat year because like what are they... yeah they won't they none of those divisions will know until they decide like they got to see how the the vaccine pans out they got to see what the numbers are at they got to see how everything reopens and then they can decide about school I mean who knows what it'll be like in the fall where I am here whether kids are going to be back full-time or we're going to be half and half or remote we'll find out oh yeah for sure for sure it's uh this stupid thing is not catchy <laughs> uh yeah, yeah like uh <clears throat> what a time to become a teacher though like it's like i was like practicums like one through three i'm teaching in the classroom face to face with the kids and my mm -hmm. last practicum and just learning how to do remote learning and doing it that way is Learning you, different ways. Yeah, if you can do remote learning, I think you can probably teach anything. I'm starting to think that, yeah. Can break you in. And what? Sorry, what was that, Alice? Can break you in or can be the <laughs> icebreaker. Yeah. Or gain experience like never before. 
It is. I mean, we've had a few of our teachers here that are first year teachers got first got positions at, at Crocus. And one one girl absolutely hates it. She was my actually my students and my student teacher. And she's just hated remote learning so much. I think she's actually quitting teaching this next year. And it's so sad. It's so sad. She's such a good teacher. I've heard yeah. there's also EMR stopping because they don't want to do remote. Um, they don't want to take online classes. Yeah. For updates. And that's that too. Yeah. Or even um, like doing your uh, field experience. Definitely. I mean, doing field experience, you're, you get into teaching because you want to be in front of the kids and you want to be helping them. But the field experience is remote learning. I mean, how, that's not, <laughs> it's not good. Exactly. And it's hard too because my where I work, it's an hour away and I travel. I'm a commuter every day. So there's a carpool of us and... We've only really been in the classroom that first month, like getting the feel of a routine and then everything came to a halt. And then I've only seen the kids like three or four times. Yeah. yeah. And oh. then I was, I was supposed to do a, a field experience and that didn't happen. Yeah, hopefully that all gets fixed in the fall, but I mean, we have to wait and see. So it's so sad. What exactly is a field experience? It's where you actually do your in the in you're in the classroom with usually another teacher, your cooperating teacher, or sometimes it might be by yourself depending on the school, and you're actually practicing being a teacher. I just noticed it on my it's required, and I didn't know what it was meant. Yeah, in through well through Brandon University, I don't know if it when I did it, it was four student teaching blocks, right? Field experience. I don't know what it is. What's it in the pent? Is it the same thing? Four? Yeah, four. And then each one, it goes like four weeks, four weeks, and then six weeks. Yeah. Rhino, do you mind writing your email in chat for me? Because it's not letting me attach it to my UCN, so I'll just send it from my Gmail. Yeah, you can, right. Oh, that's fine. You guys have been sending me all from weird weird email addresses i get some of these i'm like what the hot mama 2600 like what the heck is that? <laughs> i'm joking that's not one of them but i just thought i'd say that <laughs> that was probably justin's i yeah i should send you from my hotmail i still have my hotmail when i was like 12 years old back in 2000 2002 i think 2003 Oh, sorry. Sorry, Brandy. I sent that to you directly because that was the last person who messaged me. And hang on. Let me fix this again. Sorry. Sheepers. I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. The chat window, sometimes it comes up as direct. <laughs> Thank you, Brandy. <laughs> it comes up as direct or to everyone. I got to remember to always click everyone. Uh, So they're called field in, field experiences at uh, BU. Uh, student play. Uh, well, they, they they I think it's the field experience office is what it is. We call them student teaching, right? That's that's the what it is. But I think the technical name is field experience. So. What about practicum? Isn't this the same? Thing? Same same thing. Pretty close to it. They're all it, basically it's putting putting your knowledge into practice or your knowledge into experience or whatever it happens to be. Yeah, and the key thing for Frontier, like one year they put me on a teaching permit, so I taught right. by myself for an entire year. That doesn't count as a field experience. You have to work with a cooperating teacher because they mm -hmm. have to evaluate your teaching. Yep. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Well, the only good thing about that is you got paid to do it, though, right? Oh, that's. Oh, I was not complaining. That was a <laughs> nice little pay bump, let me tell you. Yeah. Frontier's you got paid built, for real good. Especially if you live above 53rd parallel, I think you get a little. Yeah, you get your uh, isolation pay, the remote pay or isolation pay. It's a bonus, whatever it is. So. Little something, something. Little something, something, you're right. Yeah, they just throw money at us to lift our spirits. <laughs> That's it. I got to get out of here. Sorry. <laughs> you come you come live up here with right by the lake with me. There you right go. at the uh, mouth of the. 
Saskatchewan River, right? In Good, we go fishing every day. Like, there's like, like 20 uh, cabins out on the lake every winter, like for ice fishing. And it's like, it's awesome here, man. I, I, I anywhere sorry. else. I've always wanted to do that, go up to like one of the Northern reserves and go teach for at least a year. But the problem is if I do that, I kind of forfeit my Pent teaching job. And I've been doing this for 20 years now in Pent. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah. You don't have uh, uh, tenure, I guess in within Frontier, you work 10 years and then you are allowed one year you can take it whenever you want. They'll Sabbatical, you. yeah. They'll give it to you for your pay for a whole year. Yeah, there's, there's it's a lot of the northern, the northern school divisions. They have to attract people to go up there, right? So then they offer pretty good incentive deals for for a lot of people. You That's know, sometimes so sometimes they'll say, okay, free room and board if you come teach here for a year, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, and they give you a northern uh, a northern uh, allowance, yeah, the remote allowance. Uh, uh, housing allowance too, if you like. I live on the reserve, so like they'll give you a, a housing allowance because you're not taking one of Frontier's spots, right? Yeah, and every reserve is different too, right? Some some have more money. I, it's it's an equity issue, right? Some reserves have more money than others. Some have less money than others, right? It's not a fair split. For the reserves yeah i don't know grand rapids i don't i don't see them having a housing issue right now like i'm like i'm not proud to say i'm with my parents right now eh? and What's wrong with living with your parents yeah free rent <laughs> but yeah like uh like my priority is like i'm single no kids and like the priority is real like i'm not gonna get a house on my reserve like i'd like to i'd like to welcome you all to tonight's dating service uh he's <laughs> single and... <laughs> um i just put the the grade level right above my yeah that's fine <laughs> got me red here man uh, everybody's a comedian I, I think uh, but, but but we'll have to see who gets the last laugh. <laughs> that good quality to have as a teacher is having a sense of humor. Uh, yeah. And I hate to say it, and a thick skin. You cannot take anything uh -huh. to heart because the kids will chew you up sometimes, right? They'll say the most nasty things, and you're like, eh, whatever. I was um, I was one semester. I'll just give you a little story. One semester I had grade nines, and they were really struggling. And one semester I got told to. F off five times, five different kids. Yeah. So the best thing you can do is if you get a chance, use this line. If, if you can remember to say it. So the one kid told me, yeah, F off. I said, I'd like to, but they make me stay until the end of the day. So, you know, you, you, you diffuse a situation. You take the wind right out of their sails. They don't know what to do. Right? Yes, that's what they know. If they, they know too well when you can, you can if they can phase you. Oh yeah, they know how to push buttons. Stuff. Yeah, and I always tell them I'm I'm the youngest of five children. You think you're annoying? I can be a hundred times more annoying than you ever could be. So if you really want to start with that battle, then go. Let's go right ahead. So <laughs> have a good laugh with it. I used to work with a kid who could tell me to. <clears throat> he could tell me to get lost in two languages, only one of which I could understand. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had your number, Sam. <laughs> Well, I've got, I've got students when I come into the classroom, uh, science. I was lower, I was here. If they talk about other favorite teachers, you just have to ignore. Yeah, you'll be, you'll be kids' favorite teachers and you'll be kids' worst, worst hated teachers. It's part of the game. So two months later, say, I wish you were back. I like you better than this and this. <laughs> That's not very nice when they say that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you have to have thick skin. Like I was doing a, a remote learning there and I was uploading all my stuff, like my assignment to Google Classroom. And on the comments, one of the kids says, this assignment sucks. <laughs> like, like 
commented and then tell you the truth it kind of put a lot of work into that assignment it kind of here's the deal some of your assignments you do are going to work like charms and some are just going to bomb yeah. it's, it's, it's part of teaching and i mean and the the ones that bomb you just learn from it and move on there's nothing you can do about it sometimes they just don't work uh brian i'm gonna have to send this in two different parts because it's not letting me send it in one bulk email uh, that's fine you might the pdfs might be pretty big uh yeah, who'd i get oh, i got janika's just and who'd i got nicole ferris sent me one uh go those i'll print them off well not print them yeah print them off. yeah my mine's are mine's pretty fun like uh the kids really enjoyed it. And again, you can have really boring games that are actually fun. It just depends on your attitude towards what you're doing, right? If you have a good attitude towards the game, even if it's boring or whatever it is, the kids will enjoy it. Next step, Jack, but it's not a math game. Wow, that hurts. Well, I'm just, I'm just, my soul is crushed now. Thank you. The only really fun bad. games are math games. Come on. It's a deck of cards, so it's messy. Deck of cards, yeah. I'm a big fan of this one card called Magic Gallery. Sorry, what was that, Kyle? You That's a big nerd game. Which one? Magic, <laughs> Magic the Gathering. Yeah, Magic, that would be an interesting one to do. It's a big nerd game. It is a big nerd game, but I mean, there's a lot of probability involved, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of mechanics involved too. So it's not just uh, one strategy for a student. It might be multiple strategies in uh, the back of their mind yeah. while playing a game, right? Well, well uh, the might just have one strategy. One of the things a lot of schools do, and we've done it at our school, is we create game clubs, right? So kids can come and play chess, checkers, magic. Any, any board games or Dungeons and Dragons, anything that, that changes how they deal with people, the interactive skills. Plus, there's just so much math involved with any of those things, right? Yeah. Dungeons and Dragons is a good one. Like, I would love to try and incorporate that somehow. And the way it works is there's enough room to do. There's enough room to do. Sorry, you, you cut out there. Yeah, sorry, my audio quality is not the greatest. Yeah, no problem. It's, it's dynamic, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Brian, I have a quick question for you. Yeah. Have you ever worked in a school or a situation where, like, for example, there's a school I'm aware of that their <laughs> doesn't want the students to play with cards or dice in math class because it's um they're jw's it encourages gambling yeah well there's there's a group like the jehovah witnesses right the jw's we have uh religious people in our school too and one of the things they do is they don't call them dice they call them number cubes and you can specifically get um blank blank number cubes that you could put letters on if you wanted to like there's there's changes to them right it's, it's super common. I've had it in ma my math class before. And a lot of times those kids, they know right away, right? They'll just sit out. They won't do the activity. I, I feel bad for them, but it, it's part of their personal choice, right? So do you still use dice and cards? Because like that's just the, like the foundation of so many math games and the probability and all that. Most of the time, like 99, I'm just making that number up, by the way, 99% of the time, there's never going to be an issue, right? But there's always going to be an issue with one or two kids, and you'll just have to uh, roll with that when it comes, right? I, I do know of a school where the entire school isn't allowed to use it. Is it a, like a religious school? Um, it's on reserve, so I think it's more maybe just like a, a concern. Yeah, yeah okay, so then, so then, I mean, if you have to, you have to accept what they want and just don't do it, right? You'd have to make some changes to it, right? What would you say would be like some other go-to mater materials or manipulatives that would replace cards and dice? For probability? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you could get away with spinners might work. Uh, I don't know if they would consider that uh, gambling wise or not. Um, 
probability could be something like if they have access to a gym would be like, okay, let's go to the gym. Like I said before, 10 free throws. How many do you think you can make? Right. That's not gambling or anything, but you could still teach probability that way. Right. Okay. Okay, cool. That's, it's, it's, that's a, that's a tough question. I mean, it's, it's really depend on, you'd have to do some research and see what, see which ones you could work with that talk about probability with without cards and dice and stuff like that. So our coins, I mean, we talk about coins all the time, but. Just take them to the slots and hope for the best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, your job was really, you had a quick job there for a while and now you're done. <laughs> Wait, what time? Oh, hey, let's get rolling. Let's let's do some. Let's do a bell ringer. Okay. Reminds uh, me of uh, lab exams. Sorry, what was that? Bell ringers, lab exams. That well, that's what they are. They're based on the the, the lab exams in science, right? Biology, physics, or chemistry. You had to do bell ringers. This one. And like, this is an adaptation of what I would normally do in class, right? So everybody would have the table set up and you would go and do your one belt, play your game, do all your stuff, then move to the next one, then move to the next one. So we're going to try it to see if it works because we're going to do this. We're going to do this full remote. Okay. So here is, let's, I'll, I'll, on the website here, you can see it in front of you. Here's all the different things we're going to do. We're going to do five activities, flipping a coin, rolling two dice, spinning, Sort of spinning, drawing a card, spinning a spinner, and the Monty Hall game. Okay. So, what we have here is there's instructions. So, if you click on the first part, these are all the instructions. Okay. So, if you're flipping a coin, a penny in this case, you write on your data sheet what you think is going to happen if you flip the coin, let's say, 30 times. Right. Well, I figure I'm going to get 20 heads and 10 tails. You'd write something on there. So, then what happens is you do the experiment. Right. And then you compare your experimental, what you think it is, with what actually happens. OK, that's just the penny. Flip. I'm just going to go over these quickly because you'll see in a minute. And then there's deck of cards. If you remove a card from a full deck of cards, what's the probability that it will be a spade? So then you can talk about theoretical and experimental. OK, theoretical. Yeah, there's 13 out of 52, one out of one over four, whatever it happens to be. Then you do it 30 times. 30 times, and you see what your results are, and you compare the two of them. Do Are they close to each other? Okay. The Monty Hall game. I don't know if you've ever seen the Monty Hall game. Um, there's been, I forget what the, the, there was a Kevin Spacey movie where he gets a whole bunch of kids to count cards and stuff at the, the casino, whatever it was. It's based on that. Um, Monty Hall, basically, you had three doors. Okay. Behind two of the doors were garbage and behind one of the door was like a new car. So what happens is you picked one of the doors and then the host, in this case, Monty Hall, took away one of the doors. He basically he took away a bad one, right? He wasn't gonna take a good one. So then you have the option either sticking with your original choice or changing the choice, right? And it's kind of a really neat game. It's called the Monty Hall game. Two dice game. Um, Rolling, you're going to go to the website. If you roll the dice 30 times, how many double? So if you roll the dice, how many times do you think you're going to get doubles? And then you compare it to actually doing it. Okay. 21. Thank you, Eric. Yes. It was actually kind of a neat game. And they talked specifically about the Monty Hall game in there. For any of you who don't remember Monty Hall, it was Let's Make a Deal. And he was the host, right, of Let's Make a Deal. And he was actually from Winnipeg. Went to Tech Vaughn High School in Winnipeg. Uh, spin to win. You're gonna uh, change, them, change them to numbers and select six segments on the spinner, pick a number between one and six and record it on your data sheet. Okay, so all these are directions of how to do it. So what happens is if you also look here, and hopefully you can either keep this in the back just so you can answer the questions on a piece of paper or you can print it off if you want. Here's the collection sheet. So this one is deck of cards, penny flip, Monty Hall game, two dice game and spin to win. So for instance, on a deck of cards, right? Whether you think you will draw a spade or not from a deck and why, explain it. So then what we're gonna do is, this is where you're gonna record all your spade that you get. This is where you record if it's not a spade. And then you can, you're gonna do the experimental and the theoretical. So where do you get that from? Well, let's go back here. Uh, which one was that? Uh, drawing a card. So if you click on drawing a card, it's gonna take you to a website. 
uh, random card generator. So, uh, oh, continue. Okay, here it is. Here. No, I don't want to take an IQ test. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's for that one there. Okay. Oh, here it is. Rerun. So basically, you, you here you pull a card. Rerun it. So that's one choice. Okay, that's a and you record that. That's not a spade. You rerun. That's not a spade. Rerun. That's a spade. Rerun. That's not a spade, right? So you do that, what was it, 30 times? Is that the original one? Hang on, let me look here. I can't remember. Uh, instruction rules. Any flip? Deck of cards. Yeah, we're going to do that 30 times. So just tick mark and keep it 30 times, right? So, so your experimental probability, the denominator is going to be 30 every time, okay? So that's, that's that one there. So let's look at some of these other ones here, just so you understand the website. Flipping a coin. Flip. Why is my flip not working? Hang on, flip. It is sort of the lens on the head, eh? Yeah. Where is it showing it here? So, oh, select the coin to drag it to this. Never mind. Okay, if I actually knew what I was doing, there we go. Sorry. So there's tails. Tails. This is kind of a cool website because you can actually put multiple coins if you wanted to. We're not going to do that, but right. Oh, you can even change it to full screen. So that one you're going to do, I think it was 30 times. Figure out the theoretical probability and then do the experiment 30 times. Uh, let's double check another one here. Uh, rolling two dice. Oh, the draw, rolling two dice one. So you can pick, you can pick the shape of your dice, which is kind of cool. So just pick regular six-sided dice and we want to pick two of them. I think it was, wasn't it? And we want doubles, right? We're going to look for doubles. So throw, hey, doubles. So you mark that in the doubles category. Six and a three, no. One the, this, the websites nowadays are so good for stuff like this. This is again, toy theater, okay? So you're going to roll that. Uh, I think it's 30 times again. Okay, uh, let's double check the other ones here. Spinning a spinner. So we can change it to numbers, right? So you can see here, you can go colors and numbers. You can pick how many you want. What did it say in the, in the instructions? Was it six? I can't remember. Hang on. Let me look here. No, oh, I don't have it in front of me. Hang on. Let me go back here one more sec. Uh, bell ring instructions. I can't remember. Oh, spinner. Uh, yeah, one to six. Okay, that's what it was, one to six. So spinning a spinner, do numbers, we'll go six, okay? And then, oh my goodness, that's a horrible sound, right? So you just keep rolling it and you do that again, the certain, the number, whatever time it requires. So you figure out your theoretical probability and then you keep recording them as you go along, okay? And let's just check the Monty Hall game out just so you can see this. And then we have lots of time to play it. So, so, oops. So here it is here. I'm going to pick this one. So then it shows you the go. So you have an option of keep choice or switching choice. I'm going to keep the choice. So I click it again. I got a goat, right? Don't you know you're always supposed to switch? I pick this one, I picked it. Oh, so then what you can do is you can run the simulation, simulation however you want, keep the choice or switch the choice. So let's start the simulation. So I kind of go doo -doo 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 -doo, and you can see. So if I kept my original one, two cars and eight goats. So let's try this one. Let's try change the choice and simulate. Let's do this. Change the choice. Look how many cars I want as opposed to goats, right? Anyways, play around with that one. It's kind of fun. Okay. That's right. Let me go. Oops, too far, too far. So again, if you can, print off the collection sheet. If not, you're just going to have to keep looking at it to write your results. And you can write them down on a piece of paper if you want. 
Um, and then go through each one. Try to play each one. Like I said, you got 25 minutes. You got time to play each game at least five for five minutes each, right? That should easily get you through your uh, data collection sheet. And normally how you do this, if a, a true bell ringer, right? I would say, okay, uh, I would, let's say, Justin, Justin, you're starting on flipping a coin. Uh, Eric, you're starting on rolling two dice. And then you would play the game and you play it until I ring the bell or whatever it is after five, 10, 15 minutes, and then you'd switch and go to a new one. But in this case, just try to play each game. And if, if, you, if you only get a couple played, not a big deal. I want you to at least try each one of, of each piece. If you want to give that a shot. And you can ask questions as you're going along. If there's something you don't understand, please ask. Okay. So like I said, we're going to play this for about, well, till the end of class. So. Can we start with a specific game? You can pick whatever game you want. Just to confirm like the language here, Brian, when we're looking at the deck of cards and I say, I don't think I'll draw a spade because it's 13 out of 52. Can I say the odds are not good? Would yeah, that be you correct? Can, you can say that if you want, that works. Okay, thank you. Just You're making welcome. sure I got what you were talking about earlier. Yeah. <laughs>
okay, what's the difference between periodical and experimental at penny flips? Which, uh, which game? At penny flips. Sorry, I missed that again. Sorry, which game? At penny flips. Oh, the penny flip. Well, okay. Well, theoretically, here's my penny. Theoretically, what's the probability of a heads? One. Out of? Two. That's theoretical. You don't actually have to do it. Now, experimental, you're going to do it, what, 30 times, right? 30 times, 30 times, 30 times. So let's say you happen to get 16 heads. Well, experimental would be 16 out of 30, right? So theoretically, oh, no. theoretically, you don't actually do the experiment. Experimental, you do the experiment. So for theoretical, I should say 50-50. Well, one out of two, yeah, 50-50. Well, 50-50 is your odds, right? Think about that for a sec. You actually are just talking about odds then, right? Because one to one, right? So probability is one out of two or 50%. Uh, yeah, I'll check right away, Justin. Oh, it's Google Drive. Hang on. Let's move this over here. I rolled six dice, six pennies, or 10 times. Yeah, you're going to do it 30 times. Oh, I should do 30 times. Oh, sorry. Right, because that's your denominator, right? It's going to be however many out of 30. Why 30? Because that's what the, here, if you go oh, here. I missed it. It's back at here at the bell ringer activity instructions, penny flip. Do this experiment 30 times, recording the results each time. No, I shouldn't do it with six at a time. No, no, just one die at a time. Wow, yeah, you, well, you could do it at six if you want to speed it up. But uh, yeah, I got yours, Justin, at work. I can see it. What I may do is I might just put the link on there instead of the actual game, because that'll be easier. Actually got interesting results twice. For which one, Eric? So with the uh, penny flip, I yeah. kept getting heads for the longest time. Right. Uh, two of them ended up being heads, and uh, this was because the tail started popping up in the last uh, the last ten. That's when tails started. But I only had three up till then. And with the doubles, I actually got a lot of doubles. I got like ten doubles. And I, again, that's the neat thing about experimental probability. I mean, in reality, if you threw it 30 times, you could get, technically, you could get 30 heads in a row. I mean, it's, it's still it's the still same as any other probability, right? I want to know something. I, I exactly rolled 15 heads in 15 teams. So when you, did, when you did your experimental, you ended up with your theoretical? Yes. Now, is that always going to be the case? No. Mm -hmm. Could it be the case? Yes. That's the cool thing about probability. It's, it's, there's so much, it's, again, it's, it's coming into statistics. There's a lot of leeway in what you can do. Creates a lot of critical thinking skills. So what should I put at theoretical? One out of two. Or one one over two, that's theoretical. Because there's one favorable outcome, right, which is your heads, and there's two total outcomes, which is your heads or your tails, right? And for experimental, I'll put 15 out of 30. Which you can reduce down to? One out of two. All right. Some people will, like, for instance, if you had 17 out of 30, you can't reduce that down. You would just leave it as that, right? Okay. Uh, looks like I got yours there, Brooke, too. The estimation outdoors. Ooh. Outdoor estimate. Well, I'm gonna look at this one now. <laughs> it's fun when these come in. I like looking at them. Oh, that's cool. You're talking about the different uh, learning styles. Some some people are really good at estimation, and well. Brooke, have you done that activity before or is that just one you found? 
Um, yeah, I made that activity for my grade threes. And and were some some of them really good at it? <laughs> some were, yeah, and had some needed a lot of explaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's wait wait till you meet adults that's the same way. Some people have no concept of estimation. It's kind of interesting. No, that looks cool. I like that. That looks like a good activity too. I'll be busy tomorrow putting all these on the website. You guys have any more weird things, epiphanies or weird comments about this bell ringer so far? I got a third on the spinning one. Uh, so what was it out of your, oh, so that's weird. Wow, you got yeah. like, you got way, cause it should be one sixth, right? Yeah, I got 10 out of 30 that landed on number five. So. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. And also some of them landed right on the line and I didn't know how to count those. Uh, you would just do a reroll. Oh, I counted them as not landing on five because they didn't. Oh, yeah, I guess you could do it that way, too. So, again, if you're like if you're doing this with your class, you'd have to give instructions like clearly. Uh, well, I wasn't so. expecting that to happen, but it happened twice to me. So, yeah. Hmm. It's amazing how fast you can go with uh, the spinning ones. A lot of kids, when they do this, well, even a lot of adults would get really bored and doing the you know spinning it 30 times. But doing it this way, you can do it so quick. Nice glasses, Justin. I have a question about the Monty Hall one. How would you figure out the first question on this data sheet? <laughs> would that be a multiplication? Uh, all right, let me pull it back up here. It says number of wins when player choose to stay with his, her original card. So it would be on how many times you play it, right? So if you're playing it 30 times, how many times did you win it when you stick with the original one? So if we were to go to the game, how many times does it actually say to play it? I can't even remember, hang on. Uh, uh, spin to win, where's Monty? There's Monty. 20 times and 20 times, okay. So if we go to the Monty Hall game, so we can run a simulation if you want, or you could do it manually, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So let's say we, well, let's say we do it Simu uh, simulate it 10 times mm -hmm. and which wh what was the first one keep your choice uh yes when you keep your original choice okay so let's do 10 times so we're gonna have to do this twice right so start okay. simulation so it gives you right okay so 50 percent no, this is keep choices, 14, oh, okay. and, 14 and 86. So then you could do it another 10 times and it'll actually add on to the. But is there like a mathematical equation you could use to figure that out? Like, would you not be able to multiply it or? Well, what it is, is if you watch the original, like it, on 21, if you watch the movie, right? Right now you're assuming that your choice is because there's three there. The choice of picking the right one is one out of three, correct? Right. But what happens is when you take one, so for instance, if I pick this one, oops, hang on, let me re refresh this, sorry. If I pick this first one, right? Oh, <laughs> if I pick the first one, right? So what happens now is my choice has changed. It originally wasn't a third, but now what is my choice? One out of two. One out of two, so that changes. So. What happens is, okay, so here's the question you're asking. Do you add that one third and one half or do you multiply it? Exactly. That's what I'm asking. Well, look at this way. So if you have one third and one half, if you multiply it, you get one six. That's mm -hmm. a really low probability, right? Yeah. So 0.5 and 0.3, if you add them together, all of a sudden is quite a bit more into the 70s, right? Uh... Half plus a third. Oh yeah, 0. 0.8. Well, no, uh, what would it be, four? What's our common denominator? 
I don't know. You said 0.5 and 0.3. So I just, added oh, so, sorry. Yeah. Good point. I just did it. I just did it. Yeah. So 0.8. So for instance, so let's look at this one. If we want to sim simulate it here, let's just do this 500 times. We'll do it at instant and we want to change our choice. So watch what happens when we start the simulation here. Look at how the percentage changed, right? 70, 20, right? And I think when I did that before, it was almost 70, 30. It was almost perfect. Mm -hmm. Now it's not going to be a true adding together, right? Because it's, it's, based on, it's still based on probability, right? Okay. But you can see two thirds. It's an extra, basically almost third is what you're getting. So would I add it or yes, multiply? Yes, add it, add it, sorry. Add it, would, you would add it. Okay, yeah. cool. I'll go try that out then. Okay. What's the difference between experimental and theoretical? Can you explain that one more time? Okay. Here's my fancy deck of cards again. Okay. Okay, what is the probability of me pulling an ace out of this deck? Four. Out of? 52. Perfect, that's theoretical because I don't actually do the ex do it. You just, okay. that's based on pure numbers. Experimental would be taking a card, recording it, taking a card, recording it, taking a card, recording it, and do that 10, 20, 30, 40, 1,000 times, whatever it is. That's experimental. Okay. Yeah, because I just finished playing the spin to win game. Okay. So the theoretically, right? Theoretically, if you didn't play that game, your choice is of getting a whatever number is one out of six, right? Yeah. That's theoretically. Now, when you played it, how many times did you play it? Um, well, on the paper, it said to spin the spinner 30 times. Okay. So how many, it doesn't matter how many times did you do it? Did you do it? Yeah. Oh, you did it 30. Yeah, I did it 30 times. Okay, and how many times did you get the number you wanted? Four. So that is right there your experimental probability, right? Mm -hmm. So theoretical so, is one over six. Experimental is four over 30. Okay. Now, if you what played the, the, sorry, sorry, go ahead. The, like the ratio part where it's like favorable and unfavorable outcomes, that's the um, odds, right? That's the odds, right? So if, for okay. instance, Favorable would be one, unfavorable would be five on the theoretical. Yeah. On your experimental, your favorable would be four, but your unfavorable would be 26. Yeah, that's what I have there um, for a 26. Yeah, and now here's the deal. If you did that spinner game a thousand, 10,000, a hundred thousand times, you would get really close to one over six. You'd get mm -hmm. super close to your theoretical. That's how math works when it comes to this. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. What time is it here? Oh, it's like, gee, almost time to finish class. So opinion wise, I you can let me know be on you can be honest about it. Do you think that do you think a bell ringer like this would work virtually? Or do you think it would be better? Well, obviously it would be better in person. But can you show me like thumbs up or thumbs down, whatever you think, if you want. In a perfect world, it would be great, but not everybody has the technology, the internet to do there it. You, see, you just you just hit it right nail right on the head, and it, it comes down to an equity issue, right? Like if, like for instance, I think um, who was running off their phone? Lori was running off their phone, right? It makes it quite a bit more difficult to do something like this when you don't have the computer in front of you, right, and the access to it. Or uh, Kyle, right? Kyle was having trouble; with, the internet was slowing down a bit for him, right? Like, yeah, you're right. And in an ideal world, I think this would work, but I mean. Do you get the general idea? Like you could do this in your classroom. And it's actually, I have, when I normally do this in the classroom, I have, I think four, no, three or four more experiments. I have a cup toss one, which is so much fun because everybody, everybody always then talks about beer pong, right? When you're doing the cup toss, right? Everybody kind of goes into that direction. So there's a lot more activities that you could go with this. So 
I think that would work. Okay, hang on, let me stop sharing here. 